Hello and welcome to the Specialist Trading presentation. My name is Stephen Primo and I am the founder and president of SpecialistTrading.com. Now I am re-recording the webinar that was given on Tuesday, May 17th for Traders Accounting because we've had such an outpouring of people that wanted to review and see the recording once again and unfortunately uh, something happened with the original copy of the webinar that was given so I'm doing this presentation over again in my trading office just so that you'll have something to refer to. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with myself or Specialist Trading, SpecialistTrading.com offers unique education and courses in trading the stock, e-mini and forex markets. I'm basically sharing everything that I learned with you with my teaching on the floor because I was a specialist on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I actually was on the floor for a total of 16 years and nine of those I was a specialist for Donaldson, Lufkin and Jen Rat. Uh, after leaving the floor in the mid 90s I continued to trade to manage other people's money and most recently have gotten in heavily into teaching and mentoring. So my goal is to share with you everything that I learned on the floor. Now in today's webinar what I want to focus on is techniques for finding consistent winners in the stock market. I'm going to really give you a ton of information and you can use these techniques as early as tomorrow if you'd like. But as always, we ask everyone that is viewing this webinar to please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results, a lot of uh, techniques and information as I said that you can begin using, but remember we can in no way guarantee that any of these results will be repeated in the future. So please take a moment to view our disclaimer. And also, while you're viewing the disclaimer, I just want to go over and explain to you that when I first started trading, my, my trading was very similar to, to many people's trading uh, or investing. Uh, I had a series of really nice months followed by a couple of disastrous months where I gave everything back. And so I know exactly what you're going through. I know what it feels like to be inconsistent, to not feel as if you're ever going to get your head above water, and to, to really feel confused as to what you're doing wrong. Because I did that for a number of years. It wasn't until I met these elite traders on the floor who turned my way of trading around. I thought that they must have had some advanced tool, some advanced indicator, or maybe they had inside information to some stock companies, or maybe they had uh, advanced technology where they were getting the information sooner than everyone else was. But when I confronted them and asked them uh, what exactly what their edge was, uh, they kind of laughed at me and said, uh, uh, there is no edge like that. We're not using anything advanced. Our edge is more about stripping away the useless noise that most people put on their trading plan. Uh, that what they really explained to me was that it's the easiest thing in the world to complicate your trading, to add on tons of indicators, to join 20 chat or trading rooms, uh, to watch uh, TV and news and, and think that that's going to sway your thinking. It's the most difficult thing in the world to simplify your trading, to take these things away. And so once I started applying that process, my trading really turned around and I began uh, to become consistent in my trading. So really the specialist edge is more about stripping away the useless noise rather than adding more and more things onto your trading plan. So my goal is to teach you how to trade with this specialist edge. This is what I do with SpecialistTrading.com for all of our members and this is what I'll hopefully try to do with you in the next 45 minutes to an hour. At least, at least give you a mindset of the specialist edge. Alright, so here's what you're going to learn today. We're going to give you two edges. The first edge is designed to get you on the right side of the market. This is probably the foundation of all of our strategies, all of our techniques at Specialist Trading. That's our first edge. The second edge is designed to fine tune your entries because once you decide what side of the market you're on, you have to know how to really have a high probability entry. So I'm going to teach you these two edges and then we're going to put them together and share with you a proprietary trading strategy. Now this strategy is usually just reserved for members of specialist trading but we're going to give it to you in its entirety all the rules so you can begin trading with it as soon as tomorrow if you'd like. Alright so let's start out with this one slide here. Now I purposely removed the name of the stock and the price here because I want you to understand this process rather than wondering what stock this, this is and when did this happen and how much did you make or how much did you lose. It's not about that. We're trying to understand the process first. Okay. So let's say this is XYZ Corp and as you can see we're in a rather sustained downward move. But uh, some chat room you're in or maybe some uh, trader you follow says that this is tremendously oversold. You have to buy it. All right? It's too low. It's never been this low before. So it starts to roll around. So you jump in and buy because you don't want to miss 
the bottom of this trade, so you want to get in. So you purchase the stock, and lo and behold, by next week it's flirting with lower lows. Okay? Look familiar to anybody. Or how about this? You have a stock that's going straight up. We have a really nice sustained upward move, but you feel it's tremendously overbought. Let's say your indicators are saying it's been overbought for weeks. There's no way it could sustain these levels. It's got to turn over, roll over, and fall out of bed. So as you see, we start to roll over. You don't want to miss the top here, so you jump in and sell. And the minute you get in, look what happens. By the end of the week or two weeks later, it's making higher highs. Does this look familiar to anyone? Have you seen this happen before in your own trading? Well, what if there were a tool or some type of method that was designed to have a high probability of keeping you on the right side? Because obviously, these two examples here, you were on the wrong side. You should have been selling instead of buying, and you should have been buying instead of selling. Well, at Specialist Trading, there is a tool. This is our buy-sell line. This is probably the most important tool we have at Specialist Trading because I said, Everything is predicated on our buy-sell line. Every method, every strategy is based off of using, using this tool. It's extremely important, but at the same time, it's extremely simple. In fact, it's just a 50-period simple moving average. That's all it is. But what I want you to do now is to plot a 50-period simple moving average on every chart you have. I don't really care if you're a five-minute uh, time frame trader or if you look at monthly charts or daily or weekly charts. It doesn't matter, but plot a 50-period simple moving average. This is our buy-sell line. And here's what I want you to do. Before you take a trade, ask yourself this question because in order to use the buy-sell line properly, all you have to do is ask yourself this question, but you must ask it before you pull the trigger. And that is, where is price in relation to the buy-sell line. Okay, I'm going to repeat that again just to show you how important that is. Where is price in relation to the buy-sell line or the 50 period simple moving average? Because once you ask yourself that, you'll only come up with two possible scenarios because if price is above, then you're only going to be looking to buy or you'll be looking for buy opportunities. If price is below, then you'll only be looking to sell or for sell opportunities. Okay? Let me show you what you mean here. This is the same chart we looked at earlier. All right, We originally wanted to buy, and once we did, we see that we really made the wrong decision because it went straight down after that. Well, had we added the buy-sell line, we would have asked ourselves, where is price in relation to that buy-sell line? Obviously, price is below, so you can see we have no business even considering going long anything. We're bucking the trend. We're swimming upstream if we're trying to buy something below the buy-sell line. How about this example here? Originally, we wanted to sell, but we saw how that was wrong to do because it was continuing to go higher and higher. But once we add the buy-sell line, we ask ourselves, where is price in relation to the buy-sell line? Obviously, price is above, so we have no business even considering going short. If we wanted to short this, once again, we're swimming upstream, we're going against the trend. And the odds are not in our favor if we're doing that. We want to put the odds in our favor. That's why we use the buy-sell line. I know a lot of you may say, well, I've heard of this before. Is this really that important? Uh, some teachers uh, say you should use the 200-day moving average. Some people say use a 100 or even a 20-period moving average. Well, at Specialist Trading, the way we rate the importance of one of our tools or methods is if it can work in multiple time frames. All right? So let's see how well the buy-sell line worked in multiple time frames. Remember 2008? Remember what a disastrous year that was? Most people really got killed. They lost a, a great, many lost a good portion of their, their total uh, investment capital. Well, what if there were a tool that could have at least kept you out of 2008 or gotten you out early? Well, here's a weekly chart of the INX. That's the, uh, the index for the S&P. As you can see here, at the very beginning of January 2008, we were flirting with being below the buy-sell line. But it wasn't until... You know, well into January that you could see there was no way we were close to being above the buy-sell line. We were, we were consistently below. So this was a, a great warning tool telling you that you should be out of the market or if you're still in the market, you should raise your stops to protect yourself. And lastly, if you were thinking about buying anything, you should hold off right now and be on the sidelines until price goes above. All right. So if you're an investor, you had a lot of ways to protect yourself just by using this simple tool. And throughout the entire year, as you see here, we never got above the buy-sell line. 
So if you were an aggressive trader, you could have looked for shorting opportunities, which there are many of them right here, as I can see right now, using our strategies. At the least, you would have been on the sidelines and you wouldn't have lost anything because you would have been using this tool. All right, so let's say we go down to the next time frame, which is a daily bar. Well, in March of 2009, guess what? Price started to be consistently above the buy sell line. And into April, we were showing that we weren't any, any longer below, and this was a sign telling you that you should start to look to either get back in the market or you should at least cover your shorts if you were short. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, Steve, this is fine, but you know the market is run by a tremendous uh, amount of money. The big boys, you know, they pretty much control everything. This really isn't going to help me. Uh, say, for instance, the flash crash. I mean, that that was, uh, you know, that was all manipulative. There was no way anyone could have stepped out of that. It's the little guys like me that get hurt. Okay. Well, let's look at a daily bar once again of the flash crash. This was in May of 2010, I believe. Now here is the flash crash. The day before that, where was price in relation to the buy-sell line? Price was below. Now, I know there wasn't a consistency of being below the buy-sell line, but this was a warning telling you to be careful. It was the first time we had closed below. So at the least, you could have moved your stops to protect yourself because we were below the buy-sell line. Or, let's say you were thinking about buying anything. You could have said, you know what, I'm going to wait until we consistently close above. All right? And you would have protected yourself and missed the flash crash entirely. And then look what happened for the next two or three months. We never were above the buy-sell line, so you would have stayed out of trouble here. Now, I know some of you may say, well, Steve, yeah, but I'm a day trader. I don't really look at daily or weekly charts. I look at five, 10-minute charts. How's this going to help me? Well, once again, let's go back to the flash crash. Here's the day of the flash crash. As you can see, we fell out of bed towards the end of the day here. But where was price the entire day in relation to the buy-sell line? Price was always below. Price was never above. So if you were an astute trader and you knew how to use this tool, you would have been looking for shorting opportunities the entire day. And so rather than say, boy, you know, I got manipulated with this flash crash stuff. There's no way a guy like me can make money against these big boys. Yes, there is. This was a perfect day to make money. Uh, this was one of the best trading days I had because I was on the right side in sync with the market using this tool. So if the market was telling you right from the beginning, you should be looking for selling opportunities, you would have made a ton of money on this day as a day trader. All right, looking at actual stocks, you can see that this works well in real time with real stocks. Here's a ch weekly chart of Apple. A lot of people are saying, boy, I missed the boat on Apple. Uh, you know, I just don't know uh, if I should be shorting this or selling this. Looking how well uh, Apple was going into uh, 2010, from 2009 to 2010, it was giving you signs just saying, look for buy opportunities. Or even most recently in RIM, as you can see here in March of 2011, we were below the buy sell line. Even though we closed one day above, the consistency was below and you would have missed all these gap down openings and stayed out of trouble. Okay, so that's our first edge. Now let's talk a little bit about trade entry and the reasons why most traders enter into a trade, regardless if you're day trading, if you're uh, position trading, or if you're investing. Why do we enter into our trades? What are the reasons? Well, we've broken it down to about five basic reasons. And the first one is the price is too low. That's the reason why we'll buy something because it's just too oversold. There's no reason the stock should be this low, so we have to buy it. Or the opposite side, the reason why we enter into a trade is because the price is too high. We're going to short this. Uh, you know, the guys in my chat room are telling me this thing is way too overbought. There's no way it can go higher, so I'm going to enter short. Or let's say we listen to a trading guru. Either we're in their trading room and we mirror all of their trades, we do whatever they do, or he's on TV talking, commentating, and we listen to them or we have a, uh, a newsletter that we, we follow. So we, we mirror everything that this trader does. Or perhaps we're a technician. We enter into a trade when all the indicators are perfectly aligned, they cross over, we have a, a series of five or six indicators that all have to align perfectly, and when they do, that tells us to either enter or exit a trade. And then lastly, the most popular among stock traders is fundamental news. Most traders who follow this plan cannot, will never enter a trade until a report comes out or until uh, there is some news announcement in the company or unless uh, the earnings come out. That's their reason to enter. Even though they may want to buy or sell, they can't do it until the report comes out, okay? 
Now, there is one common denominator with all of these uh, reasons to enter, and that is that they're all based on outside sources. In other words, we're listening to outside noise to tell us when to enter. But we're not listening to the main thing we should be, and that is the chart in front of us or the market we're trading. So we need a clear-cut plan. All right, And what's needed is a clear-cut plan for entry that's based on what the market you're tell trading is telling you and not what an outside source is telling you. Remember, as specialist trading, we don't follow trading or chat rooms. We don't follow fundamental news. We don't listen to an over amount of indicators telling us. We keep everything simple and basic. This is the edge that my mentor has taught me. As a specialist, once I started letting go of all that noise and using my entry for f listening to what the market was telling me, that's when things started to make sense and my trading started to become consistent. So this brings us to our second edge. This is the confirmation method. This is the second most important edge we have at specialist trading. Okay, what exactly is this method? Well, confirmation is the verification that the trend has resumed in the desired direction. This is your signal to enter the trade. A specialist always, always waits for his trade to be confirmed before entry. Okay? So let me just explain this to you the way it was explained to me. Confirmation basically means that you're waiting to see the stock go in your direction and then you're jumping on board. In other words, picture yourself at a train station. You're waiting to go from point A to point B and you're waiting for the train to come down the tracks at the station. So as you're standing there, you see a train coming towards you. The only thing is the train is going in the opposite direction of where you want to go. Now, most likely you wouldn't jump on board this train because it's going in the opposite direction. But the truth is most traders trade this way. 99% of traders trade this way. They'll see a stock going in the opposite direction where they want it to go and they'll jump on board. Now you're at the train station once again and now you're seeing a stock or I should say a train going in the direction that you want to go. That's the one you're going to jump on board. And that's the same with trading. You want to jump on board the stock that's headed in your direction. Okay, this is confirmation method. All right, so here are the rules for the confirmation method for buys and for sells. If you have a strategy buy signal, regardless of what strategy you're using, one of ours or one of your own, one that you've uh, formulated yourself or one that you've gotten from someone else, that's fine. But you can still apply this confirmation method. If you have a strategy buy signal that is still in effect, you're only going to buy, rather than purchasing at the market, only buy once price trades one tick above the previous bar's high. And as long as that buy signal is still in effect, you'll continue to track until it trades one tick above the previous bar's high. Let's say you get a sell signal. Same thing is in effect. You're only going to sell once price trades one tick below the previous bar's low. Let me show you what we mean here. These are the the two charts we originally started looking at, remember, we wanted to buy, but we applauded the buy sell line, so we see that this wasn't any type of a buy. This was actually possibly a sell signal. So rather than just going short at the market, what we want to do is only go short if we trade one tick below the previous bar's low. So we would have gotten short if on the next bar we traded here. Well, we didn't, but the short signal is still in effect, so we'll go short if we trade here. Well, we didn't. And now the sell signal is telling us, well, we'll go short if we trade here. And finally, on this next bar, we traded below. So this is our entry. And guess what? The train is leaving in our direction. Okay? Now, I know a lot of students, especially beginning students, always say, well, Steve, I originally wanted to sell here. But I had to wait two, three days until I got in. And I basically got the same price or even I, I would have gotten a little better had I originally sold. But here's what I always tell them. As traders... I know most traders, the minute they buy something, they want to see it go straight up. And the minute they sell something, they want to see it go straight down. And the trouble is, it doesn't always happen that way. And what most traders will do is they'll wait around for a couple of days, and if they see they have a loss in place, they get scared or they start to doubt their strategy, and they'll throw in the towel. When in actuality, if you had just used the confirmation method and just waited until the train was leaving in your direction, you wouldn't have had to sit through these two or three days of the trade going against you, we had any doubt and fear. And then you would have just had a nice simple entry with no risk involved because things were going in your direction. So the confirmation method is not designed to get you in at the top or get you out at the, or get you into the bottom, I should say, or get you out at the top. It's designed 
just for you to be in sync with the price. All right, we're trying to be in sync with the market. That's our goal at Specialist Trading. Here's that other example where we originally wanted to sell, but we re realized we're above the buy sell line, so we should only be looking to buy. And let's say now that this is a buy signal. Rather than simply buy at the market, we wait for price to trade one tick above the previous bar's high. And then once we enter, we see that we're in sync with the ongoing upward trend. Now this works, as you see, in, in actual stocks. Once you have a buy signal in effect, as long as the signal is still telling you to go long, you just continue to use this process until it finally does trade above. You enter, and as you can see, it's off to the races. As long as the signal is still in effect. Once the signal is no longer in effect, then you would cease to use the confirmation method. Here we are below the buy sell line. Let's say you wanted to go short DVA because it looks like we were going to you know, really fall out of bed here. But rather than just sell at the market, you apply the confirmation method. And until it trades one tick below the previous bar's low, that's when you would enter. And you can continue to use this process, once again, as long as you get a sell signal. This works in any direction and in any time frame. You can apply it to intraday charts just as easily and it works just as well. The same process applies as long as you have a buy signal in effect. You'll enter when we trade one tick above and as you see, the trend will resume in your direction. Even if you want to use it going short on a five minute time frame, this method will still work. Now, is this method guaranteed? No, this is not a strategy. This is not a system just based off uh, trading or entering one tick above or below the last bar. You still have to have the rules of a strategy in place. You still have to have some type of strategy telling you to go long or short. This is, once again, just an entry method. It's a technique to elevate your chances for success. Okay, so another mistake many of my students make is they, they think that this is actually a strategy. It's not. It's a technique for a high probability entry. All right, now there's also another advantage to using the confirmation because even though the purpose of using the confirmation method, it's not to get us in at the beginning of a trend, but it's also to keep us out of bad trades as well. Let me show you what I mean here. Let's say you want to go long Amazon, all right? Well, we're above the buy sell line, so that's a good sign here. That's good because you're in sync with the larger trend. And you see we had this kind of topping formation here, but it's starting to take off, so you usually would just jump in. But after coming to my classes or becoming a member of Specialist Trading, you said, well, no, I have to wait till price trades one tick above my entry bar. So I'll wait till we trade here, and that's where I'll enter, just to have confirmation. So you wait, and it's a good thing you did because look what happened. Price started to go down lower. And so you continue to apply the confirmation method, meaning you'll only buy once you trade one tick above the previous bar's high. And as you see, the buy uh, signal is still in effect, so you continue to apply it. And you haven't even entered yet in the last two weeks, but all of a sudden, things start to look pretty bad. And lo and behold, now we are below the buy sell line. So there's no longer a buy signal in effect because we are below the buy sell line. So this entire time, the confirmation method kept you out of trouble. Okay? So this is another advantage of using the confirmation method. Many times, the best trades are the trades you don't take because it totally kept you out of buying a stock that had a faulty signal. All right, so let's review. The confirmation method says to listen only to what the market you are trading is telling you. So many traders make the biggest mistake of listening to outside sources, which is basically just noise. And these outside sources are trading rooms, chat rooms, or basically other people who don't know any more than you do telling you what to do. Or news TV commentators, uh, you know, they're telling you you should buy this or buy that. Or you have an overuse of indicators that are telling you when to get in, when to get out. Or fundamental news. I can't enter and trade until the report comes out, until the earnings come out. This is basically just noise. All of these things will help you if you're a long-term investor, meaning that you're trading for years if you're investing for five to ten years. But if you're looking to get into a trade that lasts anywhere from one week to maybe five or six months, there's no reason you should be concerned with this noise. All right, Just listen to what the market is telling you. And if you get a buy signal, regardless if you trade one of my strategies or your own or someone else's, you're only going to buy once price trades above the previous bar's high. And if you're going short, then you're only going to go short once price trades one tick below the previous bar's low. 
As an advantage, the confirmation method will also keep you out of losers as well. All right, so let's get to the third part of this presentation, and that's our trading strategy. This is what you've all been waiting for. Now, this strategy is usually reserved for our members of Specialist Trading. This is one of our, our better proprietary trading strategies, but we're going to share it with you in its entirety today. We're going to give you all the rules so you can start using this as early as tomorrow. But we always advise everyone, either if you're a member or someone just attending our webinar, to paper trade first. There is so much more that you can learn by trading any one of our strategies by paper trading, regardless of the time frame, for another week or a month. It doesn't matter, but you really understand the process and see how it, how it unfolds in real time if you paper trade first. Okay, so that's our only suggestion. All right, here are some of the highlights of this particular strategy. This is actually called strategy number one at Specialist Trading. It trades stocks, it's perfect for stocks, but it can also be transferred into trading the E-mini futures and the Forex markets. You can trade it in any time frame. You can go both long and short with this. And if you're day trading, if you're looking at small intraday charts, you can get anywhere from one to three trades per day. If you're position trading, just following a few stocks, you get maybe one to two trades per week, one to two setups per week. All right, here are the indicators. The only two indicators we use now are basic tool, which we use on virtually all of our trading strategies. That's the buy sell line, the 50 period simple moving average. You already know how to apply that. So the only other indicator we're using is the 21 period Donchin channels. Now this is a very common tool that's found on many charting software packages. It's uh, basically three channels that's going to help us determine our entry and our direction of the, uh, the short term trend. Now, I know a lot of people have access to the Dodging Channels, but some do not. If you do not have access, please call up your tech support service. They may be able to uh, get the indicator for you. Or do a Google search. I know there are many free sites that offer the Dodging Channels, okay? So it's lots of ways to acquire the Dodging Channels. All right, here are the rules now for going long. I'm going to go over these very quickly because you'll have this video here. You'll be able to backtrack and look at these rules, but I, I want to spend a short time just going over these rules because I'd rather spend a longer time showing you the actual charting examples. I, I feel it makes much better sense to actually see the chart rather than to just look at the wording here. But rule number one, price must be above the buy sell line, the 50 period simple moving average. This is with all of our strategies. We will not go long unless price is above. All right. Rule number two, all three of the Donchin channels must be headed in an upward direction. Okay, so we need these two things to be in place. Now we're going to look to buy when a declining price bar's range is entirely below and not touching the middle Donchin channel. If we have a bar that meets the requirements, this is going to be our setup bar. All right, so what does that mean if we have a setup bar? Well, this means that if on the next bar and next bar only, if we trade one tick above that setup bar, then we're going to go long. This is our confirmation method in effect. All right. If we go long, if we enter on the next bar after that setup bar, we're going to place our stop just below the lowest low of the pullback. So we have our entry, we have our stop in place, and then we're finally going to exit when price touches the highest daunting channel since we're going long. Okay. Once again, if this doesn't make sense, you can always go back and, and make a copy of this or write these rules down, but let's show you how this process unfolds on a chart. Once again, we're not showing you what the stock is or the price because I want you to understand the process behind this method. All right, too many people focus on looking at, boy, well, this happened in uh, XYZ. Let me go back and find that. Or what price was that? They only made this much or they made that much. I'm not concerned with that. We're only concerned with you understanding the process. So the first thing we ask ourselves is, where is price in relation to the buy sell line? Obviously, price is above. So this means we're looking for a long setup. Okay, so right off the bat, we're not even going to concern ourselves with going short. We automatically know we're just a buyer at this time. Now, looking back in hindsight, this would have been the most probable place, an opportune place to go long. So how could we have taken advantage of this looking back in hindsight? Well, the first thing we do is we add some structure to our trade, and that's the dodging channels. These are the three Donchin channels. As you can see, they have this stair-stepped upward approach, and we want to see the Donchin channels all in sync with each other, all in the same stair-step upward movement. Now, even though they may not be exactly the same, they're all coming from a lower level. So this means they're all rising. The next step is we want to see price decline while the 
Daunting channels are still moving higher, and while we're still above the buy sell line, we want to see price decline, and then we want to look for a bar that is completely below this midline. Its range is completely below. Do you see how this range is touching the midline? And this, this bar is too, but this bar is not. So this is our setup bar, circled in blue here. This means that we can go long if on the next bar and next bar only, we trade one tick above, right here, basically where this green horizontal line is. All right, well, here's the next bar. And as you can see, we never got that high. So the trade is negated. All right, so the trade is over. We never got that high. We do not wait for another day or two for us to get to this point here. We simply say, well, we never got there, so it's over. But guess what? All the rules are still in place, so we can continue to apply our confirmation method because this is now a valid setup bar. Okay, so we don't really have to negate the trade and walk away. As long as the rules are still in effect, we now go to this lower bar. So we'll enter if we trade one tick above this bar on the next bar, and we did. So this is where our entry is. So we've entered into the trade to go long. We place our stop just below the low of the current sell-off. So we've entered here. We're either going to get stopped out with a small loss or the train is going to leave the station and go in our direction. And if it does, once it touches the top Tonchin channel, that's our signal to exit. You can either have a limit order or exit at the market. Okay? And that's it. That's how simple it is. We're looking to buy in sync with the trend we're looking for the bar that is completely below the midline. Once we enter, we place our stop below the lowest low and wait for price to resume its upward trend. Here's a perfect example in letter M. This is a real world example. We're above the buy sell line. All the daunting channels are headed upwards. We wait for price to sell off while those rules are still in effect. And we look for the first bar that is completely below. Its range is completely below the midline. Now here we're above the midline, here we're intersecting it, but here we're below. So this is our first setup bar. We didn't trade above it, so we didn't go long, but the rules are still in effect, so now this is a setup bar. But we didn't trade above it, so we didn't go long, but now this is our next setup bar right here. And ultimately, on the next bar, we traded above it, so we entered at 22.41, placed our stop about three quarters of a point lower, just below the low of the sell-off. And then once we entered, the trend resumed upwards and we exited at 25, 26, roughly about two weeks later for nearly a three point gain. All right, now these are the rules to go short and they're basically the exact same thing. I'm not gonna go over them because you can go back and, and recap this on your own and, 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 and just basically rewind the video. But the, the exact same rules, I'm gonna show you more examples on how to go short though. Uh, we just turned everything upside down. Let me show you what I mean here by looking at this example once again. All right, now we're looking to go short. The first thing we ask ourselves is where is price in relation to the buy sell line? Obviously price is below. So this means we're only gonna be looking and considering short setups. But just because we're below, it doesn't mean we're gonna sell at the market. We have to see some type of structure. So we add our daunting channels in order to go short at these levels right here. And there's our daunting channels. And as we can see, we have three channels here and they're all headed in the same stair step downward direction. So this is fertile ground here to go short. We're below the buy sell line and all of the three daunting channels are headed lower. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have a perfect setup to go short, but now we need to see price bounce. We need to see a nice little bounce or rally in price. And when price bounces, we're still below the midline. Now we're touching the midline, but now we have our first bar, which is range is entirely above the midline. So that's our setup bar, meaning we can go short if we trade one tick below. And we can only enter on the next bar. We can't wait around for a week or so before we go below this level here. This has to happen on the next bar because we're trying to catch momentum. Remember, we're trying to jump on board the train that's leaving the station. And if that train doesn't leave in the next bar, it's most likely not going to leave, so we negate the trade. But as you can see, we did enter on the next bar, so our entry would be one tick below, and then we place our stop just above the high of the most recent rally. Okay, And we're either going to get stopped out with a small minor loss, or the trend is going to resume, and we're going to go in our lower direction and cover once we touch the lower daunting channel. Now I know a lot of you are saying, well, that's great, Steve. This is a great 
method. I really like this, but it seems like we're leaving a lot on the table here because price continued to go lower. Well, as a member of Specialist Trading, we teach you advanced methods on how to you know, stretch out your gains. This is just the most basic and generic way to exit. But if you'd like to continue to be in the trade, we show you advanced methods on how to stay in and hopefully get more gains out of the trade. Okay. All right, so let's show you some more examples here. This is an actual sell example in CEPH. We're below the buy sell line. Now here's one uh, part here that a lot of my students have trouble with because they'll say, well, Steve, how can this be a valid setup bar because we're above the buy sell line. In fact, the bar before closed above. That's true. The most opportune examples you want to see are we are entirely below the buy sell line to go short or entirely above the buy sell line to go long. But this does not mean just because we intersect does not mean it's not a valid signal. The real rule, if we get down to the, the nitty gritty, what the real rule states is that if you're going to be entering short, your entry must be below the buy sell line. All right, You cannot enter to go short if you are above this line and vice versa. You cannot enter to go long if you are below this line. Okay, So we have all three daunting channels headed lower. We see price bounce. And here's our first bar that does not touch. It's completely above the midline. Now, even though it opened above, our entry would be one tick below, which is below the buy sell line. So this is a valid signal to go short. So we entered at 64.36, immediately placed our stop up here roughly around the 66 level. So we're, we're basically risking about a point and three quarters, maybe a point and a half. And then it was off to the races to the downside. Once we touched the bottom line, it's recovered at 62.27. We made a little over two points. All right, so let's show you now some real world strategy number one examples. I feel that you'll really learn this technique better if you see actual charts. These were actual signals that were given to our members to either go long or short using strategy number one in the last three to six months. All right, cost COST, we're above the buy sell line. All of the daunting channels are headed higher. We look for a sell off in price with these two rules in effect. And then we look for a price bar completely below the midline. That's this bar here. But we couldn't enter because we never traded one tick above. But the rules are still in effect. So now this is our setup bar. And we entered long at 70.61. Placed our stop just about three quarters of a point lower, below the lowest low of that sell off. And then it was off to the races. The trend resumed. The train left the station. And we exited once price touched the top dungeon channel. Made nearly three, three points on this particular trade. Here's a sell signal in Pepsi. All three daunting channels are headed lower. We're below the buy sell line. We're looking for a bounce in price. Once the price bounces, we're looking for a setup bar, a bar that's completely above the midline. And this is our first setup bar, but we never entered into the trade because we didn't trade one tick below. But the rules are still in effect. So now this is our valid setup bar, and we entered short at 64.26 on the next bar. Remember, once you find a setup bar, you have to enter on the next bar. You can't wait two or three days. So we entered at 64.26. We placed our stop just above the high of this rally. And look what happened. Using our confirmation method, the trend resumed lower, and we exited three days later for our nearly one and three quarter point gain. Here's another trade in ATI. This was uh, in January, going into February this year. Price is selling off, declining. Here's our first bar that is completely below the midline because all these bars prior to it were either above or dissecting the midline. We can't touch it at all. We have to be entirely below. So we entered at 55.66, placed our stop just below the low of the current sell-off. And then a week later, we sold for a nearly four-point gain at 59.41. Another trade in CNX. We're above the buy-sell line, well above. We're waiting for price to sell off within the three ascending daunting channels. We touch the midline, we touch it again, we intersect it again, and then finally, even though this bar is a little bit higher than the previous bar, it's completely below the midline. So this is our valid setup bar. See, the valid setup bar doesn't have to be the lowest bar. It just has to be the bar, the first bar that is completely below and not touching the midline. So this is our setup bar. We ended at 43.64 on the next bar. We placed our stop just below the low of the sell-off. And a week later, we were making over three points, selling at nearly 47. 
another buy signal in CTSH. This was just last month at the uh, end of April. Even though we were dissecting the uh, buy sell line, remember once again the rule states that it's a valid trade if your entry is above the buy sell line. So it was a valid buy signal because our entry was above. Now if our entry had been down here below the buy sell line, even though the Donchian channels were headed upwards and we were below the midline, it wouldn't be a valid trade because we're below the buy sell line. But our entry was at 78.03 above the buy sell line and then we placed our stop just below the low of the sell off. And two to three days later we made nearly five points in CTSH. Now here's a, a great double signal in NBL. This was in uh, April and in March of this uh, uh, last couple of months of this year. As we see here, we are above the buy sell line. All three Donchian channels are headed upwards. Uh, you can't see the chart doesn't go back as, as far enough to see, but we are coming from a lower level. So the Donchian channels are headed upwards. We have our valid setup bar here. The first bar completely below its range is completely below the midline. So we entered on the next bar at 87.57 placed our stop just below the low of the sell-off and in two weeks we exited at 92.16 once we intersected this top line and made a little over four and a half points. Now the beauty of this is, is as long as all the rules are still in effect we can continue to track this stock and once again we start to see that we have a sell-off. Here's our first setup bar but we had no entry because we never traded above it. Here's our second setup bar and we had an entry at 90.16 we placed our stop just now below the lowest low of that current sell-off and by week's end we were making nearly five points by selling at 95. Okay, These were two valid trades that happened uh, in April and in March. Here's a sell signal in TIE, uh, inexpensive uh, $18 stock but this works just as well in $90 stocks as it does in uh, 10 and $18 stocks. We are below the buy sell line and all the three Donchian channels are headed in a stair step lower direction. So now we wait for price to rally. We have our first price bar above the midline, but we never went short because we didn't trade below. We have our second price bar above the midline, but we never traded below there. Our last third bar above the midline, everything is still in place to go short. So we entered short at 1827, placed our stop just above the highest high. And then the train left the station to the downside, and we covered at 1681 for a quick point and a half in about a week. Now here's a signal in pH. Once again, the same rules apply to go long. We have our first setup bar, but we never traded one tick above. We have our second setup bar. In this instance, we did trade one tick above on the next bar, so we entered at 8708. We look for the low of the current sell-off. Now many people, especially beginners, this is why we ask you to paper trade, would place their stop just below where we entered, all right? And you would have gotten stopped out on the next day. That's not the way we trade. You place our stop below the lowest low of the current sell-off, which was right here two days earlier, all right? Had you used that stop, you still would have remained in the trade. You wouldn't have been stopped out. And three weeks later, you made nearly six points. Now, a lot of traders are constantly asking me, well, Steve, you know, I don't have enough capital to trade stocks. Uh, many times I trade options. Well, if you see here, this is a six-point gain. If this was uh, you know, an expensive $90 stock and you couldn't afford that trading the stock, it would be perfectly admissible to buy a long call option. Now here are two setups to go short in RHI. This happened this past month in April and in May. Here we have a valid setup bar, the first bar above the declining Donchian channel. So we went short at 31.21. As you can see, the moment we got short, the train left the station to the downside. We covered at 29.15 a couple of weeks later for a quick two points. And the process repeated itself once again. This is where students have trouble. They say, but Steve, this bar is above the buy-sell line. In fact, we closed above the buy-sell line. How can I go short? That's true. We closed above, and the majority of the bar was above. But the Donjon channels are still headed lower. We still have a bounce in price, and it's completely above the midline and your entry would be below the buy sell line as we see here. So it's a valid trade. May not be the most opportune example, but it's still a valid trade. So we entered at 3079, placed our stop just above the high of the recent rally, and once again the train leaves the station to the downside. We made a quick point and three quarters in just a couple of weeks. 
Now, many online educators will paper, uh, excuse me, will uh, try to cherry pick and show you the best examples. We, we're not going to sit here and tell you that this works 100% of the time. This is a high probability strategy, but many times you will get stopped out with a minor loss. Here's an example in RHT. Now, here's our buy sell line. We're coming into the trade well below, and the dodging channels are kind of slowly but surely headed in a downward direction. So this is a perfect environment to go short. We're waiting for a bar to be entirely above. This is our first set of bars. You can see we never traded below. Our second set of bar, we never traded below. And our, finally, our third set of bar to go short, we did trade below. So we entered short. We placed our stop just above the highest high of the current rally. And lo and behold, the same day we got short, we got stopped out. So we lost nearly a point in the very same day on this trade. But don't get discouraged because, as we said, many times the trade is just unfolding for another setup. That's why we ask you to paper trade so you'll see these things happen. You'll become familiar with the many different scenarios. So had you continued to track this over the next week, you see we continue to have setup bars. We're using our confirmation method. And finally, on this setup bar here, even though we're the majority of the last three bars were above the buy sell line. Your entry is still going to be below the buy sell line, so it's still a valid trade. While the stock gapped to the downside, so you would have still entered at 44.75 on the opening, placed your stop just above the high of this current rally here, roughly about a point or a point and a half higher. So you're basically risking anywhere from a point and a half to two points at the most. And guess what? By week's end, the trend finally did kick in, and we covered at 39.74 for a quick five points in about three days. So you were risking on this trade maybe a point and a half. You had already lost roughly about a point. So you're risking about two and a half points and basically you made five in three days. So you have a nice trade here. This is all because you stuck with it and you continue to use our confirmation method with valid sell signals. All right. As I said earlier, this works just as well on a $100 stock as it does on a $10 or $13 stock. Here's Bank of America. We're below the buy-sell line. We have a valid setup to go short. We entered at $12.42, placed our stop just above the high of the rally, just like if it was if it were a $150 stock, but this is a $13 stock. And in two to three weeks, we covered at $11.06. Okay, made nearly a point and a half, a little over a point and a quarter. But as you can see here, with the leverage on an inexpensive stock, you could have had multitude of shares, thousands of shares, and made a nice quick point in the three, uh, 36 cents. Now, I want to go over this trade that's just currently happened in April. This was a signal that we gave our members. All of our members saw this, and actually it was a dual signal here. This is uh, Broadcom, BRCM. We are below the buy-sell line. And as you can see, the dodging channels are all headed in a nice stair-step downward direction. So this is perfect environment to go short. We need to see price rally, which it does, and it starts to intersect. As you can see, these last two bars are touching the midline, but here's our first bar where we, the range is completely above the midline. So this is our setup bar. We can go short if we trade one tick below on the next bar only. As you can see, we did. So we entered short at 39.78. Two days later, we covered when we touched the bottom line at 37.78. We made a quick two points in two days. So we stuck with this because we're still in a downturn. We're still below the buy-sell line. So we continue to track for our members, and we start to see a rally start. Okay, now this is starting to shape up to get short again, but this bar, we're still touching the midline. Well, the very next day, we actually closed above, and we are not touching the midline at all. So this is a valid setup bar to go short, meaning that if on the next day we trade one tick below, we can enter to go short. Well, we never traded one tick below, but guess what? Now this is a valid setup bar, okay? I believe this was the 25th of April. Even though we opened above the buy-sell line and the previous bar closed above the buy-sell line, if we're gonna use this as a valid setup bar, our entry would be below the buy-sell line. So it's a valid setup, okay? So this is a very big confusing point to our beginning members. If your entry to go short is below the buy sell line, even though the bar, uh, the majority of the range is above, it's still valid. All right, so this was on April 25th. We instructed that night for our members to go short Broadcom if it traded one tick below. All right, so the next day, the 26th, guess what? It traded just a couple of ticks below, so we entered short at 39.97, and we placed our stop just above right here, okay? 
Now this was on the 26th. Now the minute we got short, guess what happened? It went straight up. So uh, on paper, we're in the trade, but on paper we're having a losing trade because it's not going in our direction. But that's okay, as we've sh showed you and as we've said, this is not a 100% strategy. Many times you'll take these small losses. That's okay, it's a numbers game. Over time, you're going to have more winners than losers and hopefully you'll have this consistency with your trading. But look what happened the next day. This came out in the Wall Street Journal blogs, Market Beat. The next day, April 27th, Broadcom Outlook slams the stock. Bullish analysts squirm. It was quoted that Broadcom reported an inline quarter late yesterday, but its forward guidance disappointed investors. Several analysts slashed price targets, and Broadcom is getting slammed in the market today, down about 12% at 35.38. So this news came out, once again, for all these fundamental traders, this news came out on the 27th, and Broadcom was down 12%. Now, if you had waited, once again, for outside external information in order to enter the trade, you basically would have missed it, or you would have been entering to go short when the stock was down 12%. Now, had you learned to listen to the market, which is what was taught to me and is what I teach my members, you would have had this information two days before, not because the CEO of Broadcamp called me up and said, hey Steve, um, we're going to have some real negative news come out in the next couple of days, so why don't you tell your members to go short? I wasn't given a phone call or someone didn't email telling me that inside information. The only thing I got my information was, was from the stock, just as I tried to explain to you. Forget listening to this outside noise such as uh, you know, fundamental news or uh, an overuse of indicators or trading rumors, chat rooms. Learn to listen to the stock because the stock was telling us two days in advance to go short. We didn't have any idea of fundamental news. We didn't even know the earnings or anything was coming out. All we were doing was listening to the stock. And as you can see here, here's where we got short two days before the news came out, and here's where we covered. So we made over three and a quarter points in just a couple of days by listening to the stock. Everything was told to us by the buy sell line and by the Donjon channels. We didn't have to wait to go short down here. We got short up here by listening to the stock. Okay? Do you see how important it is to remove the noise from your trading and to just keep it simple? All right, now there are a number of people that are members of specialist trading that like to trade options. And plus they say, well, Steve, how well does this, this technique work in different time frames? I'm not a day trader or I like to look at weekly charts. Well, here's a weekly chart of letter X. As you can see, going back last year in December, we had some really nice setups, the same process, the same technique. We're above the buy sell line. The Donchin channels are headed higher. If you were able to purchase this stock, you would have entered a 38.30 on this weekly bar, placed your stop the same process below the lowest low of the sell off, and then waited for the trend to resume. Once we intersected the top line, you would have exited. You would have made over 13 points in basically a, a, a month or two. Now, I know a lot of traders like to trade options, so we always suggest to go up and use weekly charts. If you see these signals on weekly charts, rather than purchase the stock, you can purchase an option and you would have made 13 points in a couple of months. Now, later on within the year in February, you got another buy signal. Here's our setup bar. Even though this is a weekly chart, the same process applies. You entered at 48.26, and in a couple of months, this time you made over 18 points. So you see how we made like 30 points using weekly charts so you can extend your gains and have these higher gains. A lot of people will say, you know, Steve, this is a great technique, but I don't like to go for one or two or three points. I like to go for 10, 20 points. Fine. Just use this and apply it to weekly charts. But if you're an intraday trader, the same process works on a 60-minute chart. All right? We're above the buy-sell line. We're intersecting it, but our entry is above. So this is a valid trade to go long at 59.74. We place our stop just below the low of the sell-off. And hours later, we exit with a nearly point and a half gain. Okay, same process. And if you want to even go down to a smaller time frame, here's CMI on a 10 minute chart. We're below the buy sell line. The buy, uh, I should say the Donchin channels are, are headed in a nice stair step downward direction. Once we have a rally, we look for a bar that is completely above the midline. Here's our first setup bar, but we didn't go short. Here's our second setup bar. We entered short at 112.68. And 
less than an hour, we're making over a point. All right, so let's recap. What have we given you today? I've given you two edges. The first edge is our buy sell line. This is a great tool designed to get you on the right side. Many times, the reason why we're losing in a trade, even though it may be a nice signal, it's because we're out of sync with the buy sell line. Go back and look at your trades, your winners and losers. I can almost guarantee that the majority of the time, the reason why you were losing is because you were buying below the buy sell line or selling above the buy sell line. If you can learn to apply this simple, effective tool, regardless if you use one of my strategies or not, I really feel it'll elevate your chances for success. All right? And then you can apply this confirmation method. All right? Edge number two. Rather than just simply buying at the market or selling when something is too high or buying when something is too low, wait for a confirmation entry to trade one tick above or one tick below your previous uh, bars high or low. This is the confirmation method. Remember, we're trying to be in sync. All of our methods are designed to get you in sync. Now, you could use these and apply these methods just to your own strategy or you could apply them to the trading strategy. You saw that we used the buy sell line in strategy number one as well as a confirmation method. Okay, so we gave you the strategy in its entirety. You can start using this today or tomorrow if you like. But remember, we always advise our students or people attending our webinars to paper trade. All right, so I want you to honestly ask yourselves, as I ask the people in the real-time webinar, I'm asking you people who are watching this recording, would any one of the tools I've given you today, any one, help your trading this past year? Let's say a year ago you knew about the buy-sell line and knew how to apply it. Could it have helped your trading or the confirmation technique? Even if you don't want to use the strategy, let's just say you apply the confirmation technique. Don't you think it could have increased your odds for success? And lastly, the trading strategy, one of our top proprietary trading strategies that we usually just give our members. Don't you think that strategy could have helped you this past year? Well, if you're interested in many more edges, such as what I just shared with you, and many more strategies, such as the one I just gave you, I'm inviting you all to become members of SpecialistTrading.com. This is the homepage to my site. As you can see, I offer courses in stock trading, e-mini trading, and forex trading. Now, each different course comes with separate and distinct strategies. All right, strategies just for trading stocks, strategies just for trading the e-mini, and strategies just for trading the forex markets. Each course comes with upwards of 10 strategies for each of those individual markets. Should you decide to become a member of my online trading courses, here's what you're going to receive. Continued detailed instruction, just as you just saw. The way I explain this, these first two edges and the strategy, you're going to get continued instruction in all of our other strategies because we offer numerous stock strategies. As I said, upwards of 10 strategies in each one of my courses. You're also going to receive nightly updates and signals. While you are learning, I'm going to be furnishing you with nightly signals. Now these signals are not, once again, for you just to trade off of what I'm trading. I don't want, you know, my goal is not to teach you to take the same signals I'm taking. My goal is to teach you how to spot these signals on your own. So I'm giving you basically uh, a reference point to check your work. Ultimately, you won't need to go to our update signals. You'll be able to find them on your own. But I provide the nightly updates and signals for you. Now, at the end of the week, we have a weekly webinar where I go over the week's trades and any questions that you may have. And we have this webinar for you to go over the current trades. Now, everything is archived. So if you're not able to uh, see the, the videos when you want to, you can, you can learn at your own pace and watch these videos that are archived. And you can go back and look at past trades and past reference. As a member of Specialist Trading, this is not a monthly ordeal. You are not subscribing because once you become a member, you have lifetime membership. I have been trading for over 34 years. I make my living off of trading, not from teaching. And so I really don't have any plans to quit trading right now. You're going to be there uh, with me trading right along and I'll be with you every step of the way. So a lifetime membership, I have no plans of, of quitting trading right now. So once you're a member, you're a member for life. Anything that we receive new, any new strategies, new techniques and tips that I've posted on the site are yours now uh, because you are a lifetime member. Now here's an example of what you receive for signals. Okay, This is the way once you become a member of Specialist Trading, you will receive nightly signals. You'll simply go to our, our uh, membership page. You'll, you'll log in and you'll go to the nightly signals report. And this is what you receive. This was just a couple of months ago on March 17th. As you can see, we give you the name of the stock for buys and for sells. 
We tell you where the close was just so that you can make sure that you have the correct stock you're, you're tracking. We sh show you the short term or current trend and then we give you the actual strategy so you can check to see if you're in line or you can understand the process of why we got a signal. These are just a few of our numerous strategies that we have labeled and we show you why they are by showing you what strategy. We give you the signal where you should go long or short and then the entry point. Once you're in we tell you where to place your protective stops, different conservative and aggressive stop and different exit points. Okay, Same for both long and short. Now let's just look at a few of these signals. These were actual signals given to our members on March 17th or for trading for March 17th. Let's just look at the ABC, Heinz and PM. This was strategy number one and strategy number four combination of a signal to go long. Now this was on the 17th where we told our members to buy and look what happened. Here's another example, Heinz, HNZ. This was a strategy number three buy. Okay. On the 17th, we told you to go long here at these levels and look what happened in the following weeks. And then lastly, these were actual signals given out to our members in PM using strategy number one, the strategy we went over today. And here's our buy signal. Now, this presentation was originally uh, aired, the webinar, on the 17th. This was uh, actually given uh, for uh, traders accounting on the 17th. This is a recording of that, but on that day I, I showed you the signals that were presented for our members on the 17th. And we only had two buy signals that we posted. CAH was never activated because using our confirmation method we never got up to the point of entry. But FDO was. Now on the 17th, the day of entry, we told you what strategy was giving you a long signal, a combination, and we told you where to enter, where to place your stops, and where to exit. Okay, now the market that day was down over a hundred points, but we don't care about what's going on. Remember, we're not listening to outside noise. We're not trying to confuse ourselves by saying, "Well, the market's down. I better wait." Uh, we're just basically listening to the stock. And here's what happened in FDO because this was a strategy number one signal. Had you entered 52.32, you would have had nearly a point gain on that particular day. All right. Now, even though our exit for strategy number one would be right here at these levels. We show you proprietary ways in which to protect yourself with our money management. And if you're trading the most conservative method for uh, this particular strategy, you would have now moved your stop to unchanged. There would be no way you can lose anything in this particular trade. So this is just a really current example trying to show you how this really works for all of our members in real time. Now, our courses, should you decide to become a member of uh, 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 SpecialistTrading.com in the stock course, our stock courses run anywhere, the entire course, the lifetime membership, $3,000 to $5,000. Once again, this is a one-time fee and you are privy to all the information, everything provided, all the numerous strategies we have, upwards of 10 strategies and all the information that I give you on a weekly basis. But we realize many uh, members, especially beginning students, cannot afford that price even though we offer some discounts for that, they cannot afford those high thousand dollar prices. So what we've currently started to do is add individual stock courses. These are just courses on our individual stocks. We've broken them up. So if you particularly like a, a, a stock a trading strategy, you can purchase that one individual strategy. Now with these individual stock courses, you still, still receive detailed instruction from me, two videos worth of instruction telling you how to trade these individual strategies. We tell you where the entries are, where the exits are and the stops. So you totally understand the entire process. Along with this, we give you one year trade signal alerts. So you'll know exactly once again where to enter these signals on a nightly basis when they occur. We give you PDFs of all the rules so you can have a hard copy and learn. If you're away from your computer, you can uh, print it out and learn the strategy. And then you have personal email access with myself. This is one of the, the real big perks. A lot of our beginning students always have questions so they can email me whenever they like. I usually answer the same day or no later than 24 hours. So you get all of your information right there to you coming directly from me. Now these individual stock courses usually run upwards of $500. So if you want to, the purchase of strategy number one, uh, so to say, the strategy which I shared with you would cost $500. But we have many more strategies. In fact, we have strategies that are even better than that. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, particularly strategy number four is one of our best strategies. Now, 
Individual stock courses run $4.95, but for a limited time only, for the people attending our webinar that attended the other day, Trader's accounting price is now reduced $100 down to $3.95. So you get all this information, one individual strategy for $3.95. Remember, if you want to purchase the entire lifetime course, that r runs upwards of $5,000. If you want to purchase one individual course, $3.95 as a special limited time price only for our Trader's accounting members. Now, if you have any questions, please contact my trading associate. This is Brett. His email is brettm at specialisttrading.com. You can ask him about any one of our numerous strategies, and you can ask him about the pricing. As well, you can contact him either through email or by giving him a call at area code 310-844-7220. Once again, you can ask him about lifetime membership prices, the increased prices of cl close to anywhere from three dollars to $5,000. We have specials and discounts on those as well. But if you're only interested in one of our better trading strategies, and as I said, better strategy than the one I just gave you, contact Brett. He can give you more information on all the different strategies, different time frames, and different, different styles of strategies we have for stock trading, as well as e-mini trading and forex trading. You can contact him directly at 310-844-7220. Now, if you know what you like, say after seeing this webinar or my classes, you've seen me before in different webinars, you know what you want, you don't have to speak to anyone, well, you can go and purchase our individual course at this website right here, www.protraderstrategies.com. We have my individual strategies posted there, and you can just go and simply purchase it online without speaking to anyone, okay? We thank you so much for attending the webinar that was posted on May 17th. Uh, I'm sorry that the original uh, uh, recording has been damaged somewhat because of uh, trying to get it out so soon. So I recorded this for you once again, the same exact presentation, but just so that you would have some, something to have reference to. Remember, in closing, though, I showed you a lot of performance results. I showed you a lot of information, but please take a moment to view our disclaimer because we can in no way guarantee that any of the results that we showed you today will be repeated in the future. So as you're taking one last look, I just want to thank you so much. Thank all the people at Traders Accounting for uh, presenting and sponsoring this webinar. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call us. Call my associate Brett at the number I gave you on the last slide or email him. We'll answer any question you may have. In closing, thank you so much once again for attending the webinar. Uh, watch this uh, recording as often as you'd like. Use the techniques, the edges, and the strategies that I gave you. But as always, paper trade for a while. Do not just jump in and use your hard-earned capital. Many people really do not fully understand the process. But feel free, once you've paper traded, to actually use these concepts and techniques. Hopefully, they will elevate your trading to the next level. Thank you so much. Look forward to you becoming a member of Specialist Trading. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.